Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. In September 1988, the song Don't Worry, Be Happy made it to number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in the USA. It was the first a cappella song to reach that position. The following year, it won Best Song of the Year at the Grammy Awards. The song was written by Bobby McFerrin. Four years after the song was released, it was rumoured that McFerrin had committed suicide. Some said he had shot himself. Now, whilst these reports were totally fabricated, there were some who actually wished it was true. You see, those who have to deal with depression and anxiety disorders are painfully aware that a cheer-up approach is no cure for their struggles. In fact, it's mockery. In Proverbs 25 and verse 20, we read, Like one who takes away a garment in cold weather, and like vinegar on soda, is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. Hello and welcome to Set Free with pastor and author Ken Legg and myself, Phil Edwards. And this week we're having some discussion on a matter you may well be familiar with, worry. Not just worry though, but winning over worry. Now, welcome, Ken. You just said when someone is suffering from anxiety, glib statements like, oh, don't worry, cheer up, and all that kind of thing, it's probably the worst thing that someone can say, isn't it? It certainly is. Uh, in fact, I heard somebody once say, telling people not to worry is like telling a pig not to grunt. <laughs> well, thankfully, we're not <laughs> it, pigs, but... Uh, it does some come so naturally, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it would be great if we could just switch these sort of emotions on and off like that, but we, we know that we can't. And, uh, you know, Phil, I mentioned earlier on about um, Bobby McFerrin and the rumour that uh, he'd actually committed suicide after having sung that song. Of course, it was only a rumour. It wasn't true. But uh, there was a similar sort of, you know, be happy, don't worry type song that was written during the wartime. I don't know, well, probably before your time, of course, but uh, uh, you may be familiar with the song, Pack Up Your Troubles in, in Your, your old, old Kit bag. bag and Smile, Smile, Smile. Yeah. Well, the guy that wrote the music to that did actually commit suicide. Just a little bit of trivia there on the side. But uh, some of these things don't even work for the people that sing them or write them, you know what I mean? Mm. So what do you actually do to help someone who's struggling with this? Because... It's easy to say, uh, get over it, you know, don't worry about it, it'll all work out okay. But yeah. for some people in particular, they really struggle with anxiety and with worry over sometimes the smallest of things and sometimes it's, you know, very legitimately worrisome things. But we, we struggle with dealing with it. What do you say to them? Yeah, and look, let's also say this, Phil, that those that do say things like don't worry, be happy, they're sincere, they, they want to help, but they just don't know what to say. That's usually the thing. But the truth of the matter is that feelings cannot be controlled directly. They can't be switched on and off at will. It'd be great if they could, but they can't. Now, our emotions are responders. So in order to bring them under control, we must really address what it is they're responding to. So mm. that leads us to the question, what do emotions respond to? And basically, we're, we're left with two possibilities. One is that uh, feelings and emotions are either physiological or they're psychological. Uh, let, me, let me explain. I, either they're a result of something wrong, some sort of imbalance in our body, maybe some chemical hormonal imbalance. It could be a glandular dysfunction, postnatal, post-surgery conditions, diabetes, menstrual cycle dynamics. Um, on and on, we can talk about some of the physical things that can set off these kind of negative emotions. For example, the thyroid gland controls our metabolism. So an underactive thyroid, thyroid gland can be responsible for mood swings and depression. Mm. So the first thing that we need to ask is, is it physiological? Is it because there's something wrong with our system that needs to be brought back into balance, you know, through medication? But the other possibility, of course, is that it could be psychological. Uh, what I mean by that is that uh, we've only learned how to view our circumstances, our lives, our situation from a given perspective, and it's not helping us. You know, we've developed these what I call self-defeating thinking patterns, and uh, we can't train ourselves to think another way. We need help to view our circumstances differently to what they are. Let me give you an illustration of this very thing that we're talking about. As you know, in, uh, and um, Vision Radio promotes one of our products called 155 Bible Studies for Small Groups. Mm -hmm. Now, we've got that on a CD, and, and you know we just uh, supply that to loads of churches around the country, and it helps them you know, to run their small groups. Now, I actually got a call one day from a lady that ordered one of these, and she'd received it, 
But she said to me, it doesn't work. I said, oh, that's uh, funny. Uh, you, you know, uh, I, I began to ask her a few questions. Then, uh, then I said to her, do you have the program Adobe Reader on your computer? She said, no, what's that? I said, well, you need that to read PDF files. You know, it's, it's a free download, and I, I told her how she can download it. Now, she didn't have a problem with her computer, not with the hardware. She had a software problem. You know, she needed a program to be loaded onto that uh, computer that would read the file that we sent out. Mm. Now, just imagine if she took that computer to a computer technician and said, I've got a problem, I, I can't, uh, <laughs> this won't, but, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd rub his hands together and she'd be see dollar signs. Yeah, and, uh, yeah right. as you say, she'd be poorer for it because the problem is not a hardware problem but a software problem. Now, it's like that with things like depression and anxiety. Sometimes we think that we've got a hardware problem. If we have got a hardware problem, if there's a problem with the brain, then we need medication, we need medical help. But if there's a problem with the mind, which is totally different, that's the function of the brain, hmm. we need some counselling that will get our thinking back on track. And her situation there was a lack of knowledge. She didn't know that she needed this particular piece of software in order to read those files. Absolutely. And, and often that's our case too. We worry with lack of knowledge. We worry over things that we don't know, the unknown I've experienced this in my own life. Is I've learned, possibly the hard way, that you've just got to kick back from that and give it to God because he knows the unknown. We don't and can't necessarily, but we've got to sort of seek it out, don't we? Yeah. So I guess what you're saying, though, is that the diagnosis is all important. We need to have that. Yep. Otherwise, we can't treat the worry, the problem, in the way that it needs to be. That's right, and I'm not a doctor, and I don't profess to be, you know, qualified in that area. So uh, the first thing will be a medical checkup. But even then, when a person goes to uh, see a doctor, you know, they do need to be examined properly and not just given antidepressants aut- automatically or, or medication to deal with these negative emotions without proper investigation. Yeah. As you say, diagnosis is all important here. So getting back to what you were saying at the beginning, it, it's really unhelpful to say to someone who's in a state of anxiety or worry just you know snap out of it yeah you know don't worry about it it'll all be fine what do you actually say well if i say to someone don't worry be happy i'm basically addressing their emotions and basically i've got no right to appeal to anyone's emotions directly because feelings are not controlled directly but indirectly by changing the way we think see our emotions are mainly a product of our thoughts they're a reflection of the state of our mind, what's going through the process of our thinking and our perceptions and so on. Mm -hmm. So to tell a person to stop feeling the way they do is actually to mock that person. If I want to help someone who's anxious, I should rather try to help that person to think better, not to feel better. Mm -hmm. Because if I can change the way they think, then I can change the way they feel because that's a byproduct of thinking correctly and healthily. That's why the Bible speaks so much about renewing the mind. The Bible says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And so our heart, the condition of our heart is transformed by the renewing of our minds. And Phil, if I can say this, in my experience in counselling and ministering over 38 years now, um, I would have to say this, that probably the two biggest areas where people struggle the most is what they think about God and what they think about themselves. Mm. Uh, a lot of people have got erroneous thoughts about um, what God is like, the truth about God. They've been uh, taught wrong things, incorrect things. So things that make them actually withdraw from God and uh, be afraid of him. And they've been taught wrong things about themselves so that they beat up on themselves and they, uh, you know, they really just uh, have a hard time every time they think about themselves. And I reckon this, if we can change the way that people think about God, and the way they think about themselves, we can fix about 90% of uh, you know, the problems that we're talking about in this area of uh, wrong perceptions. Mm, and there's a key verse there that you just mentioned, that's be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and it's the Holy Spirit that does that. Good advice this week on winning over worry. We'll have more for you tomorrow. And until then, remember you don't have to carry that baggage because God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg, including the book What's Eating You, which features topics from today's message, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au.